So I was originally thinking on Pentecost and talking, I wanted to talk a bit about the Holy Ghost, but I realized a lot of the things that I was thinking about talking about were things that I'd already discussed in a previous message talking about the Holy Ghost. And I was praying a lot about what to say and what to share. And well, basically all the things that have unfolded recently unfolded. And I thought to myself, you know, I, I felt impressed by the spirit to, to talk about that a bit, but I, I thought, how do I tie that into Pentecost? This is a special day. We really need to focus on that. How do we put these two things together? And as I was praying on this, the Lord reminded me of what happened at Pentecost. In the scripture that we, I read at the very beginning, it talked about the people that were filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. And I know a lot of people don't really talk about speaking in tongues because it's kind of a, a weird gift, if you will. I know there's churches that, that go out and they start, well, I've, I've seen actual churches where they start speaking like a baby babble, and I've seen people, churches where they start speaking Spanish. So I, I know that there's a, a very, very large range of view of what this means. And in the original church at Joseph Smith Church, I know that they would sing songs in, in, um, in tongues, but it's, it's not something that's really a part of our movement today. And yet, when you look at the book of Acts, and they were speaking in tongues, what did that mean? People thought that they were drunk. And I imagine, you know, if you see someone today speaking in tongues in some of the ways you see it, you're like, yeah, that guy, he might be on something. But there, there was more of a, a purpose to what they were doing. Because the people that spoke the languages they were speaking said, oh, no, they're speaking my home language. They're speaking my tongue. I understand what they're saying. And I understand it perfectly. And this reminds me more of, I'm, I'm going to go with the, uh, the Brighamite missionary program. When you give someone like three weeks of training and send them out for a two-year mission in Brazil, right? And these brothers and sisters, they receive a gift of tongues. Not necessarily all of them, but they're able to speak the language very quickly and pick it up. I do believe that that is a spiritual gift that they're using. And it's very similar to what's going on in Acts. But how does that tie into what's happening right now? We all speak English, but we've been taught not to speak to each other. And we've been taught ways of speaking so that when we communicate, we don't understand each other. And I'm not just talking about politics here. I'm talking about the entire country. I've sat down with Protestant friends and tried to talk to them. And when I say things like grace and works, I have to explain to them, this is what I mean. I need you to please explain to me what you mean so that we can come to an agreement on how to communicate. If we don't have a common language, it doesn't matter that we're still speaking English or Spanish or whatever, because our definitions are what are the most important. And I would like to suggest that at Pentecost, it wasn't merely the words that they were using when they spoke in tongues. They had to understand spirit to spirit because if they don't, it doesn't matter what we say because we're going to put our own things to it. But if we speak spirit to spirit, the Lord is going to help us understand. The greatest example in my mind of speaking spirit to spirit is Ammon. Ammon and uh, King Lamoni, and basically he's, you know, he just saved the king's sheep, and he's out there just tending to the horses now, and he comes before the king because the king heard what he did, and he doesn't say anything for a long time. But he doesn't have to because Ammon is listening to God. And so even without words, he's able to hear what Lamoni is, wants to express, but can't, because Ammon knows how to speak spirit to spirit. And when I look at what's happening in the world today, what I see isn't 
us versus them. It isn't the good guys versus the bad guys. It's us versus ourselves. It's us being unwilling to see where other people are coming from, regardless of where we're coming from, and listen with the eyes of God, the ears of God. See with the eyes of God and listen with the ears of God. Because the reality is that everybody's hurting on some level. And we've been taught for so long to just hold that pain inside of ourselves and not, not talk about it, not work it out. And then when it finally does come to a head, it just explodes. And when we have a problem, we complain using ideologies but we don't seek a mutual solution. And again, I'm speaking on every single level. And so because of that, we see that there are people out there doing bad things, saying bad things and believing bad things. And then the question becomes, what can I do? And at the end of the day, does fighting offer any real solutions? The answer of course is no. Because whether you win or lose, someone is going to be oppressed in some way. And we have to figure out how to communicate with one another that, that allows freedom of thought and freedom of expression in ways that are not harmful to other people. Now, when I was thinking about this this morning, Gandhi came to mind. And I thought about how when the British came, he just sat there and, and they basically won because the British wouldn't fight. And I remember reading a book and the book was talking about how Gandhi got really lucky because when the Nazis were coming, they were gonna do the same thing. But the Nazis weren't like the British. They would have thought, hey, you know what? We're the superior race. God gave us these submitted people. We're just going to wipe them out. But the Nazis weren't able to get there. I personally believe that that was intervention from the Lord. And so I share that story because whatever methods the spirit tells you to do, I genuinely believe that the Lord will back us up. However, there's also what happened to the brothers Nephi and Lehi when they went out and did their missionary work and they converted the people of a certain city and all those people were rounded up and burnt alive. So what happened with those people? The Lord doesn't always protect his followers. And it's easy to say, well, you know what? That had to happen because, you know, there needed to be a testimony against these people. And I'm pretty sure that's what the Book of Mormon actually says. But at the end of the day, that's still people that died. And there's still people that are going to be hurting because of the loss. So how do we, how do we deal with that? The solution that comes to my mind is what is taught in the scriptures, what's taught in Kabbalah. And that is, we have to be the light into the world. All we can do is fix ourselves. And if we are that light in the darkness, other people will see and they will fix themselves. And I know it sounds like a solution that is impossible and can't be done, yet, Christianity exists today because that's what Jesus did. Rather than trying to go out and make people do the right thing, my suggestion is that we focus ourselves on what the right thing is, build a solid relationship with God, not as a separate thing out there that we you know, want to see over, over there somewhere, but as an actual being that is a part of ourselves. The Holy Spirit can dwell with us. We can develop a real relationship with God. And as we do, we learn to listen to the Spirit and to speak spirit to spirit. And I can testify to you and I can promise you that no amount of human reasoning, no amount of skills and debate or anything else will ever help convert someone to the light more than being converted to the light ourselves ever will. So my prayer today, my message to you is that today in this day of Pentecost, let this be a day of Pentecost for us, 
that we will learn to speak in tongues, even if that tongue is English, to speak spirit to spirit one to another, whether we're online or in person, so that the light of Christ can truly extend out from us to the world, so that we can fulfill Tekken Olam and we can finish the creation as God has called us to do. And that is my prayer and my message, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.